What up, football family? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Show. I am your host, P.L. Coulter. All right, it's week 12, Ballers and Ballettes. Uh, we're coming down to the end of the regular season. If you have already clinched a playoff spot, kudos to you. Good job and congrats. Uh, if you have not clinched a playoff spot and you're still fighting to get into the uh, fantasy football afterlife, I got some good news for you. You, you got the GPS right here for you, baby. We're going to get you to those playoffs if you just listen to the instructions, all right? So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, we're going to profile uh, a few players uh, that uh, may not be sitting on your waiver wire, may be stashed on your bench, but it's definitely a good time to get them in uh, the lineup because uh, there's no more time to delay. So let's get started. Now, uh, we'll start with the first game of the week uh, being tomorrow uh, at Ford Field uh, with the Detroit Lions taking on the Green Bay Packers. Uh, me personally, there are several uh, players in that game that should uh, be fantasy gold for you because it looks like both offenses will absolutely get off. Uh, but we'll profile two from the game specifically. Uh, first, running back Kevin Smith for the Detroit Lions. Now, Kevin Smith, like, literally came off the street to amass over 200 total yards and three touchdowns uh, last week against the Carolina Panthers. Man, if you're the Carolina Panthers, you know you need to be ashamed of yourself. First, Chris Johnson comes out of his grave and puts up 130 on you. Only last week to come back to his regular 2.1 yards per carry. And then you let a guy that was at Best Buy probably working in the, the electronics department a week ago come out and light you up for over 200 yards. I digress. Back to Smith. Now, he's filling in for the injured everybody. It's like they got three or four or five injured running backs in Detroit. Um, but uh, he did get uh, starter reps uh, Tuesday in practice. So all signs point to him getting the bulk of the load, even if he doesn't start this week, uh, he being Smith. Um, he does have a great matchup because for all of Green Bay's prowesses, I mean, undefeated, cruising to a number one seed in the NFC playoffs, they can't stop anybody on defense, and LeGarrette Blunt last week ran right through them uh, for over 100 yards and a touchdown. So, uh, back to Smith, I mean, if you look at his 200 combined total yards, 61 of those was on receptions. Uh, so, if you get points per receptions, that's um, even a double bonus for you to get Smith into the lineup. Uh, he may still be floating out there uh, on your waiver wire uh, if someone savvy hadn't picked him up. So, if uh, you're having some running back issues and Smith is on your lineup, hey, put this tape on Paul. Go pick that brother up and get him into your lineup tomorrow. All right. Now, uh, standing forward, Phil, we'll also profile another Detroit line that may have um, fallen back onto the waiver wire for a lot of you leagues. Um, that's Mr. Nate Burleson, wide receiver. Now, uh, I know that Nate was drafted in our league and in, in most other leagues as well, but it's fallen out of favor. He just hadn't really been that productive. Um, the, Detroit has been spreading the ball around in Megatron, of course. Uh, rightfully so, should get most of the look and most of the love. Um, but uh, the last couple of weeks, Burleson has really gotten it together. Uh, he's had 15 catches, 446 yards, and a touchdown the past two weeks. So he is trending upward. And for you points per reception leaguers, 15 catches in, in two weeks, uh, that's huge for somebody if you're just playing them in the third wide receiver or the flex position. And this week, that's really what we're profiling. Uh, your flex position, those matchup positions, the last two or three spots on your roster that can make the difference between winning and losing. Uh, so if uh, Burleson is available, so if Smith is available, hey, get them into your lineup. They should be fantasy football goal for you uh, from a flex position. Now, uh, if you're having some quarterback issues, which uh, the quarterbacks, uh, uh, they're having a rough go of it the last month or so. Uh, you may have Schaub. Uh, you may have had uh, Jay Cutler, who just went down for six weeks. Uh, you may have Michael Vick. Not sure if uh, he'll be back. Big Ben uh, and his thumb issue. Um, or if you've had uh, another quarterback that may have a, a brutal matchup this week, uh, you may want to take a look at Vince Young. Yes, that Vince Young. Yes, V.Y. <laughs> from the University of Texas, formerly Tennessee Titan. Uh, now, last week, um, V.Y. did fill in for an injured Michael Vick and had a, a pretty good um, uh, showing uh, against a, a stout New York Giants defense. Uh, now, let's start with the picks because I know the haters want to start with the picks. Yes, he had three picks, uh, but he also had the 23 completions for 258 yards and two touchdowns. Now, uh, if you really want to be technical about it, the boy should have had over 300 yards passing uh, because Deshaun Jackson had a 50-yard catch call back on a taunting. We, Deshaun, hey, you still got me 20 points last week, so I can't be too mad at you. But come on, Deshaun. 300 yards, you know that triggers a bonus in most of our leagues. Uh, but I digress. Getting back to Young. Um, now, 
Let's not forget, most of Young's problems, and the reason why he's not in Tennessee now, is not because of on-the-field problems. It wasn't like he couldn't get it done or he was throwing the ball in the dirt, uh, a la Tim Tebow, no disrespect. Uh, but um, most of his stuff was, was noodle-related. Uh, his noodles just kept boiling after the you turned the stove off. And he had noodle issues, y'all, just noodle issues. I digress. Um, but it uh, looks like that um, that he is a solid backup. He was a successful starter with a winning record in this league, and he can throw the ball. I mean, he has a weird motion, uh, but he's very effective. You all know what he did at Texas, uh, and uh, he was very solid as a starter for Tennessee. He just didn't get along with the coach. Um, now, moving on to this week, uh, the Eagles face a Patriots defense um, that's um, not all that great. Uh, they're horrible against the pass, so um, with uh, – the game potentially being a shootout because we all know that Tom Brady can get it done on the other side. Uh, look for Vince Young to put up similar numbers, if not better, because um, he may get a lot of garbage receptions and garbage time yards and maybe a garbage touchdown or two at the end of the game because the game may be out of reach. Uh, if you're an Eagles fan, I hope it's not because of that, but hey, this is a fantasy football show. So uh, if you got Vince Young sitting out there on your on your um, waiver wire, hey, don't be afraid. Make a bold statement. Pick that brother up. Put him in your lineup. Get your 30 points and then get him out of there when Vic comes back. Now, we're going to move on to the Minnesota Vikings and profile a player that we hadn't really touched on this year. And that's Mr. Percy Harvin, uh, wide receiver slash slash. He pretty much does a little bit of everything. Now, uh, of course, I'm not saying that uh, Harvin is uh, a waiver wire pickup on your league. At least he shouldn't be. Uh, but uh, he is one person that you probably sit on your bench, the lower tier of your bench, and you only play for bye weeks and matchup purposes because of the Vikings offense has been really erratic. I can't blame you for that. Uh, this week, he has an excellent shot to get you some uh, some fantasy gold uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one uh, is because ever since uh, they put Christian Ponder into the lineup at QB, uh, looks like that uh, Harvin has been a lot more involved in the offense, doing a little bit of everything. No, he doesn't return the ball like he did last year, which is probably the reason why he got put on a lot of you all's benches. Uh, but uh, now he's a lot more involved in the running game. He's a lot more involved in the passing game. Uh, the last two weeks he had a rushing touchdown and a 26-yard receiving touchdown. So he's getting it done in a variety of ways. Now starting to look like how he looked when Urban Meyer was using him down in Florida. Uh, now, uh, what helps him this week is the fact that Adrian Peterson left last week's game against Oakland with a, a high ankle sprain, and his status for this week is uncertain. Uh, even if he does play, him being Peterson, uh, he'll probably probably be limited because he hadn't had much practice time, which means that not Toby Gerhardt, but Percy Harvin will be counted on to pick up the bulk of the um, running back duties uh, from a second-tier position. Now, um, if you look closely at the stats, Harvin has 224 rushing yards and a touchdown this year and actually has more rushing attempts uh, than Gerhardt. Uh, he's a lot more explosive. Uh, you can be very creative with him on the wing, pitch out plays, um, screen plays, draw plays, uh, things of that nature. Uh, he's starting to really get it done. Uh, so this will be an excellent week. And I'm even going to call Percy Harvin a must start this week. If he's sitting on your bench or, Lord forbid, on your waiver wire, pick that brother up and get him in your lineup this week. He should do some damage against those dirty birds. Now, moving on to our Homer alert pick this week. Now, uh, the Homer pick, of course, is that guy that you play week in and week out because you either A, want him to do good, or B, because it's a pride pick. I mean, how can you bench Chris Johnson and you took him with your first pick, right? Didn't mean to pick on you, Chris, because you're not even the uh, the topic of the discussion this week. But I digress. Uh, we're going to stay in the AFC South, though. So if you're uh, a fan of the Houston Texans or if you're an owner of uh, stud all-world wide receiver Andre Johnson, uh, I know you saw the news that he's cleared to play this week against Jacksonville, and you've been itching to get that brother back in your lineup. Hey, put this tape on pause. Put all of that on pause. Be on home alert. Uh, for more than one reason. I mean, yeah, if you have your your um, playoff uh, spot secured, then yeah, you can play around with your lineup and put him in there and see what he does for you. Uh, but there are some, some humongous red flags, challenge flags, hanging all over Mr. Johnson's head. Uh, first of all, I mean, he hadn't really played since week four. We're in week 12, y'all. That brother ain't played in almost two months. Uh, he's had a surgically repaired hamstring. We all know those can be tricky. He hadn't really played at game tempo, even if he's been practicing. That's not the same as game tempo. It's a AFC uh, South rival in Jacksonville who's still fighting for their lives. I digress. Um, and uh, you're, just not, you're just not sure what you're going to get. If that's not enough to scare you off, 
then Matt Leinart should definitely be enough to scare you off. I mean, if he was coming back and uh, he had uh, Shaw back there uh, winging it around, then of course I tell you to start him with all certainty. Uh, but we're not sure of what we're going to get out of out of Shaw, um, I'm sorry, out of uh, Leinart. We're not sure if he's the Leinart from USC or the Leinart from Arizona. Uh, so my uh, advice to you, Johnson owners is to just slow it down, pause, give him a week to see exactly what he does, uh, and then get him back into the lineup. Uh, I'm sure you have some players that you've been playing that's been successful for you while Johnson has been out. You may want to ride with them one more week and save Johnson for the playoffs. All right, this concludes our week 12 edition of the Fantasy Football Show. Uh, as always, we like to tell you that life is a sport, so always play to win. Um, in lieu of the Thanksgiving holiday, I'd like to wish each and every one of you a very prosperous and blessed Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, lots of food, family, and football for you. I'm personally thankful for each and every one of you. I'm thankful for Mr. Rodrigo Alcaraz and Mr. Danny Padilla uh, for contributing to the show. Much love to you guys, and um, I'm about to uh, catch a plane and do my cash real thing. So, God bless. Good luck. I'm out.